You're listening to Desync Nerds, a Nintendo Switch podcast. This is episode 35, airing on Monday, the 4th of June. We're your hosts. I'm Colin. He's Devin, bringing you all the latest news and hot topics from around the internet. This week, we have Mario Tennis Aces info. Walmart is better than 4chan. And Mega Man 11 details. But first, Devin, what's your weekend gaming been looking like? And don't say the four-letter word. I actually won't say the four-letter alert because I barely played that. I played this other crappy game that also I shouldn't talk about. But uh, no, I played a bunch of Mario Tennis, actually. And people are already really, really good at Mario Tennis, like painfully good. I, uh, so every time you, you play, you get points. And I played against somebody who I was like the game before he got maxed out points was me. And he just demolished me. Like That the, sounds about right, yeah. Yeah. There's a thing you can do that's like it's suboptimal, but if you make it work, you get like you get more powerful in the context of the match. And he just kept doing this on me. And I was just like, I don't so you, I don't know how to you do got this. Dookie'd on. Yeah, no, hardcore. He was he was playing with me and I was just like, I don't I don't know what to do. So Did he break your racket? He didn't break my racket. He didn't need to. He beat me without that. He didn't have to mic drop that hard on you? Yeah. Nice. Uh, but but Tristan liked it, and so I have it on pre-order because I really want a good couch co-op game for me and him. So. Did you even try that? Not yet. I've been, I've been so busy <laughs> doing, busy doing uh, what? productive things. Okay, yeah, let's just transition into me. Uh, so I started the week off playing a little bit of um, Battle Chasers Night War. And then uh, this Pokemon game came out, but it sounded really terrible, so I figured I wouldn't even try it. And suddenly it's taken over my life. I tried that Pokemon Quest game, and I cannot stop playing it. Also, you just had a cat ninja behind you. Is that what that was? Yeah. 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 Pokemon Quest is the best game. Oh, my God. It's actually the worst game. It's, it's the dumbest game I've ever been addicted to, and I'm not ashamed to say that. You were it's addicted like... to Pogo for a long time. I still play Pogo. This is worse than Pogo because Pogo requires me to do something. This game is like, it's like a management sim and that's why I like it so much. I have, there's a game on my phone that's like I'm a hockey sim. I'm the GM of a hockey team and I really love it because I get to, to GM a hockey team that's tight. That's kind of what this feels like, but Pokemon. And so it's just got me hooked. And I never actually do any of the fights. I hit auto and then I judge them after, the, after they win or lose. And I mix, mix it. It's so much fun. It's so dumb and it's so much fun and I love it. You're just like, Pikachu, you could have done better. No bonus for you. No, it was Eevee. Oh my god. My Eevee... So there was this, there was this thing where like, if you put Eevee in the red slot, he'll be a, a Flareon. If you put him in the blue slot, he'll be a Vaporeon. Well, I want a Jolteon because that's the best Eevee evolution. Fight me, I'll kill you. And mine evolved from the green slot into a Flareon. So I killed him. I, 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 my Needle King ate him. <laughs> that's a little violent. I feel like I this also, is like I couldn't get a fire attack on him. And then so like the more times you try to change his move, the less chance you have to change it in the future. And I kept getting screwed over by his attack. He had dig and like charm, and I couldn't get either of those things off of him. And the more I tried, the harder it got. So I just fed him to my Nido King. Forget it. Get out of here. I don't need this in my life. Cut those toxic people out, you know, they always say. I don't, I, there were things I wanted to say, but I don't know how to fall out, follow up to cut those toxic people out when talking about a Pokemon. You should probably just play the, the transition sound. Just <laughs> On to the news! First up, we have Super Rare Games. Next game to be Shelter Generations. What is Shelter Generations? Shelter Generations is a... It was released on the eShop a month or so ago. How about that? Uh... It sounded really cool. I never actually played it because I was also afraid it was going to be super lame. Uh, So you play as a a mother lynx, and the goal is to raise your cubs. Like, that's that's the whole thing. Yeah, that. Yeah. That looked really good. Like, it looked, like, artistically really good. Yeah, yeah. It's got that, like, paper craft style. I figured that had, like, a 50-50 chance of being super dumb or being super awesome, and I've not actually heard about it since it released, so I just kind of assumed it wasn't any good. Um... So yeah, this is a thing that they're dropping. Um, just as a reminder, they do 3,000 copies of a game, and then they don't touch it anymore, and that's all you'll ever get. And they also do the exclusive rights thing. So this is, there are 3,000 copies. When those sell out, they will be gone. And uh, those are actually still available for pre-order as of whenever I started writing the show notes, so like three hours ago, I think. 
There's a link in the show notes. And there's something else. Oh, they also, when they release their games, when Super uh, Rare Games releases the games, they they uh, pack in little trading card packs. With their first one, they did a bunch of, they were like, so there's like a total of like 10 cards per pack, so 3,000 cards, or 30,000 cards, and then like 100 of them were signed. So you had a very rare chance of getting a signed copy of one of those cards from the original developer. And uh, yeah, so it's pretty cool. All right, let's move on. We have some Mario Tennis demo released and details to talk over. Yeah, so the demo's out. Go download it. I don't know why you wouldn't have already downloaded it. Call in. I have it downloaded. I just haven't played it. Fight me. Oh, okay. Well, you should play it, and then you should buy it, and then you should play it online with me, because this is the sort of thing that I enjoy. Only if you play Let's Go online with me. Oh! I missed it. There's, there's a thing. Don't let me forget that there's a, there's a thing I didn't put in the show notes when we talk about Let's Go. It's important. Um... So yeah, that's a thing. It released. It's free to play. We don't know how long it's going to be available and free, so go get it now. We also got some details on the adventure mode, but they're pretty, like, who cares, really? Let's be honest. I mean, I don't know. People are excited about this, but I only care insofar as it's a couch co-op game, and so it's 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 dampening my ability to give a crap about details about the adventure mode. If I bought this without your influence, that's all I would care about is the adventure mode, so... I mean, I just want you to be a better gamer. I don't understand. I don't like. I hate PvP in games. Yeah, I, I, I mean, everybody's got to be terrible at something. Um, I'm terrible at PvPs and shooters. That's that's me. That's my claim to fame. Anyway, so the details we got were that you play exclusively as Mario, and then as you progress through it, you'll get a bunch of new abilities, different kind of shots and whatnot, and then you also get new rackets which customize how you play. And the important takeaway for me here is that it's not just a tutorial mode. This isn't Splatoon 2 story mode. This is an actual like adventure mode where you have goals and you try to complete stuff and it's like, kind, of, kind of got like RPG features to it. So I, yeah, I mean, it's there. I, I won't barely touch it. It's a couch co-op PvP game for me. So but yeah, you All should right, get it. Let's move on then. Get Mario Tennis. I probably will because that sounds awesome to me. But anyway, now let's move on to something I won't get because, oh my god, I'm terrible at these as well. Mega Man 11 details. What do we got? Uh, so we know that it is releasing on October 7th. It is now available for pre-order. It is $30 USD on Amazon, which I'm so confused by. $30 USD for the retail copy. Um, and what's also very confusing to me is that it's not there's, they're not getting a physical release in the EU. They're only doing digital for that. And I just don't I don't understand why Capcom does the things that Capcom does. Like they're talking about wanting to be a truly global company and we can't keep ignoring the international markets and blah 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 the stuff they say. <laughs> and then they're just like, "Yeah, we don't need to do physical in the EU." I'm going to kill a cat. This is full of Europores. Yeah, exactly. Like what are they doing? Why are they why are they they just ignoring a section of the of their markets? I mean, at the end of the day, I don't actually care because I'm an American, and <laughs> let's be honest, Americans don't care about anything other than America, but it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, it just seems like bad business. Uh, furthermore, we also know that there is a special edition version. I did not see a price for this, but I mean, given that the base copy is 30 bucks, I can't imagine it's more than like 70 So honestly, this is probably worth picking up. Uh, it comes packaged in with a brand new Amiibo that may or may not be exclusive to the the special edition box i couldn't actually find details on that um i know they did specifically say that they're not sure if it's going to be available in the eu because of the whole digital only copy thing so it may be exclusively a pack-in we're not sure uh but it also comes with stickers a patch like a, a clothing patch and then a really cool microfiber cloth which shows the like so when you go into Mega Man, there's a stage select screen that shows you the bosses, and it's that, but on the microfiber cough, and it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's Mega that's Man 11. Cool. And we did decide that um, the reason that you have to download some and not all, and it's not all on the cartridges because it's literally like 9 gigs, right? So your, your format sizes are 8 gig cartridges or 16 gig cartridges, so Capcom decided to go with 8 and then download some. Yeah. So that's what's, that's what's going on there, just to confirm that. Which sucks, right. but kind of makes sense. Yeah, I mean, 
but it is what it is, I guess. If yeah. if you like Capcom, then you're just gonna continually get. Uh... Let's just move on. Remember when? Uh, remember when 4chan was really good at leaking stuff? You know who else is really good at leaking stuff? Walmart of all people. Yeah, it's just I, I. One time is not a big deal, you know. It's not a big. It's not a big surprise because they did the the E3 leaks where they leaked a bunch of like E3 era games. Yeah, when they they did Rage Two and then um, Bethesda turned it into like a meme. Yeah, that was that yeah. was very very deft use of social media. I was impressed. Yeah. <laughs> But so that whole leak, it was it was whatever, you know, it happens. Sometimes people screw up and they release stuff. But then again, earlier this week, this was like, I think, uh, like last Tuesday, last Wednesday, very early in the week, Walmart released the screenshots and like the full listing for T- Team Sonic Racing, which I mean, we we knew it was coming. It's It's been... At that point, it hadn't been confirmed, but it was it was very clearly that's what they were going to do by the, the Sonic team. And then, then Walmart just drops it on their own. Um, it's just, I... Look for that next Nintendo Direct coming at you from Walmart. Exactly. At this point, you know, <laughs> I, I don't understand. It's amazing. Uh, the game or did... 4chan, or both. Yeah, or 4chan, because they also leak stuff on 4chan, which is its own minefield. <laughs> uh, and then finally, the, that did actually get announced formally later this that last week so like i think it was like last thursday or friday that it, that the sonic team came out and talked about it but yeah walmart's given 4chan a run for its money which is not a statement anyone in walmart wants me to say <laughs> or 4chan for for that matter this is very true all right let's move on i'm gonna butcher this N- uh, nippon ichi 25th anniversary event details released you actually nailed it first off um yeah, like I said, I was going to nail it, so I did. I, let's call those shots. Um, but yeah, so the 25th anniversary, it is going to be on the 25th of July, which is actually a month out. It's kind of crazy that they announced it so early. You, you wrote 15th here. Are you sure it's 25th or 15th? Yeah, July 15th is the day. It's the 25th said... anniversary. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm listening, I swear. I'm, I'm paying attention. <laughs> you're like keying into one or two words, and you're just like, wait, no, he's wrong. You said anyway, July. Anyway, uh, so yeah, it'll, it'll be running from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Japan time, which is, I have no idea because time zones are hard. Uh, there will be four distinct like events or talks. Uh, they'll be doing a Disgaea retrospective with the voice actors for the three main characters in the very first game, which, if you're keeping track, released in... It was, it was 2000-something. It was, it, was, it was before the uh, 2010, so... This has been a while. I I think to me that this says that they're going to do something with those characters, either some kind of like, because they okay. So uh, Nippon Ichi does this kind of thing that Final Fantasy does, where they're not at all related games; they just have similar systems. Um, so one is not at all. Well, actually, I think three was related to one, but that's beside the point. For the most part, they're completely isolated experiences. So this to me says that they're going to be doing something with that original trio, which would be cool because those were the best characters. Everybody after that's been kind of a. Um, a mess in my opinion uh their second talk will be a discussion of the upcoming cinematic horror game closed nightmare which looks very creepy and i'm not at all into it because oh god why uh their third talk will be news on their tactics rpg makai wars which actually looked really cool i guess you didn't like disgaea but it looks kind of like a mobile disgaea yeah i mean i don't know i i like the uh the art style style and the large copious amounts of plot that you find in those games so I'm into the, that mobile game. And then finally, they will have news on the actual Disgaea mobile game. And again, to me, this sounds like there's something else that they're not talking about that they're going to announce, some kind of sneaker announcement, because this doesn't seem like that much for a 25th anniversary. Not something that's going to take seven hours for certain. But yeah, that's a thing for the five people in the world that care about Nipponichi releases. <laughs> None of them listen to the show. To be fair, nobody thought the Pokemon one was gonna was gonna be that long for any reason, and then it was for obvious reasons, which we'll get into later. Well, that's so, what I'm I saying, mean, though, is that, it, that there's got to be more to this than just what they're outlining. Yeah, 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 and that's the same thing with the Pokemon one. And nobody mm-hmm. was expecting what we got out of it, and that's why it was as long as it was. Yeah, that so was that's, that. that's hype for the three people who care. There are dozens of <laughs> us. <laughs> anyway, shh, all of you, all three of you. 
Lego DC Super Villains announced for Switch. Yeah, so it is a Lego game, and it looks like it's going to follow that same kind of Lego formula. If you like these games, if, you, if you've played any of them, you know what you're getting into. It's, it's a 3D adventure title where you run around and collect stuff and whatnot. Um, they're, they're fun games. They just... You can only play so many of them before you... They're very samey. Yeah, exactly. They're very much so in the same vein. Um... The idea behind it is that you kind of you create your own supervillain and then you interact with the other supervillains in the world of DC, and you go through the the like the important areas. I don't actually know very much about DC, so I don't actually know what those are. But they explicitly call out that there are famous DC locations throughout the game. But again, I'm not I'm not a comics guy, so I don't I don't know things. Um, and then yeah, it'll have a special edition with the season pass and. There will be early, you get early access to a DLC character pack with the special edition. And honestly, I'm kind of into this. I've heard that these are good co-op games, and I did enjoy the first one I played forever ago. So, I don't know. This seems like a really good fiance game. Yeah, she's not so much into DC. But yeah, she's into Marvel. Okay, so so this, but. I meant the the Lego game, not the DC edition. Oh yeah, yeah. I think there's Star Wars ones that she'd probably love, but I'm not, never going to tell her about because that's my <laughs> Switch get off. You also don't want to, you know, you don't want to bring that into your house. I really don't. Star Wars is gross. Anyway, let's move on. Tencent announced closed beta for Arena of Valor for the seven people who care about that. Take it away, Devin. No, that's not seven people. There are also dozens of us here. I've actually oh. been looking forward to this since the last Black South, yeah, which was like early January. Because they've been talking about this for a while. I think it's actually in Korea on the Switch right now. So, But yeah, for people that don't know what Arena of Valor is, uh, it is a MOBA, think League of Legends or Dota, that again was originally on the phones. It got ported to the Switch afterwards. And I think it was an enjoyable game for what it was on the phones. It will be a hundred times better on a Switch with actual Joy-Cons if they utilize the Joy-Cons properly. So... I'm actually really into this. What? I don't, I mean, I don't know. We'll, we'll see when it comes out, but I feel like something like that needs to be like a mouse or touch screen. Like how do you aim, how do you aim your, your cone attacks accurately with a joy con? You got to wait for it to finish scrolling that way and then oh, stop it. Have you ever when played you're... like a twin stick shooter? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. If they do it, if they do it that snappy. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, so you you know you joystick to the right, upper right, and then it pops up the little like indicator of there it's gonna be, and then when you let it go, it fires. Like, okay, yeah, yeah. I played a lot of Enter the Gungeon. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah, I got a survey for that the other day actually. Nice. So this is a thing, and I'm excited for it. There's a beta sign up. The beta, okay. Uh, let's let's hit these one at a time in a coherent order. There's a beta sign up that's available now. There's a link in the show notes which you should definitely sign up for. The beta will start this summer, and they also have said that they're not going to be accepting everybody, so go take the survey if you want in. And then finally, they said that there will be exclusive rewards for the games for the beta players, which I think is kind of lame, unless I get into the beta, and then it's really cool. <laughs> well, Old School League had the same thing, but they were mostly like crappy recolors anyway, so... Yeah, League, league early skins were garbage, so it didn't matter, but... Arena of Valor is actually like a fairly mature game. It's been out in China, not Korea. Oh god, I'm so racist. It's been out in China for a long time now. Tisk. I've been anyway, thinking, ready, ready no, no, to no, I have, I have to defend else? myself. I've been playing Maple Story, and that's a Korean company, and that's where that came from. Also, the four-letter word game is is uh we got we got boned by their time. Um, uh, what do you want to call it? I'm spacing so hard on their time zone. That's what it is. Because they, they shut down the game at like 9 o'clock our time because it's like midnight their time. You got to know the important markets and Korea is the most important market. I mean, it's honestly, yeah. <laughs> For some games, absolutely. Uh, let's move on to one of those games because it's definitely not for Americans. Devin isn't the only one confused by Sushi Striker. Yeah, so Nintendo released a how to play video for Sushi Striker, which is great because forever ago they put out a video of uh, it was Nintendo Minute, I think it was, and they they played Sushi Striker and showed it, and 
I had no idea what I was watching. I had no clue. I seriously watched like 10 minutes of that video and I still had no understanding of the game at all. And apparently they heard me or I wasn't the only person because they released a how to play video. And once you have somebody stopping to explain it and say, hey, this is what I'm doing, it's actually not that complicated or difficult to follow. And yeah, so it's there. There's a link in the show notes. It's got a, they talk about some of the other features too. There are a Pokemon-like mechanic where you collect sprites, you level them up, and then you evolve them. So, you know, it's, 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 it's Pokemon. Uh, no, they transform, Devin. Yeah, oh, sorry. They, they don't evolve. They transform. You're right. My bad. Um, They're Digimon. But only if they transform back are they Digimon. That's the important distinction there. It's a crossover. Fair enough. Uh, they also opened up their official website, which was sushistriker.nintendo.com, and again, link in the show notes. And finally, Famitsu got a, re- or a review out for it, and they gave it a 32 out of 40, which is not exceptional. I'm ready to move on. Can we move on? <laughs> if you guys had Next noticed, on the docket, Colin loves E3 that leaks. Game. Oh god, E3 leaks? Yes, E3 leaks. Let's just, let's just talk about E3 leaks. Was this 4chan too? Who is this one? This actually was originally 4chan. Um, <laughs> of course. We'll get into why it's actually in the show notes because I, if, if you haven't noticed, for the most part, we keep away from leaks and rumors because it bothers both of us a lot. Uh, as much as we can anyway, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Except when it dominates the whole news cycle and it's all anybody's talking about. Thank you, Erica, whatever Pokemon leaker was. Um, yeah, so a image was released containing nine game icons and a person was saying that it was the it was the setup for the Nintendo E3 booth. And it was detailing what would be available at the booth. Um, and then destructoid picked it up and in destructoid's post about it they said that they had received embargoed inner inner they had received embargoed information about some of the games on the list which first off how do they say that and not get in trouble that seems like a really good i'm gonna get blacklisted kind of statement i I this is last day anyway (laughs) yeah i guess i don't i don't know i don't understand how you can say that and not get in trouble um in any case, the game list was Dragon Fighter Z, Monster Hunter Generations, FIFA 19, Killer Queen Black, Starlink. I, I don't even know what that is. I have no idea where that even came from. Uh, Paladins, Overcooked 2, Mario Tennis Aces, and Fortnite. Which, woo, Fortnite. As my little brother actually said, he was like, I may actually play Fortnite on the Switch. Uh, like 100% was, I will too. Just because it's a pub, it's a, it's a, br game on switch yeah we don't have any of that I'd, anywhere i'd play i'd play the four letter word on my switch but my switch doesn't come with a 1080 ti so i can't i can't run it i mean they put it on the phone how does uh, yeah it's obviously not the same game well your your brother was saying that they put like um npcs in there yeah that was the whole thing in the news cycle forever ago and uh was it yeah it was oh. a big deal yeah so it's it's not the same game i don't know i think we'll get that too eventually probably but yeah so for the most like this is this is half stuff that we expected half stuff that isn't too far-fetched and then what is it fortnite now fortnite's actually the only really shocker here yeah i mean we they talked about putting dragon fighters on the switch back when xenoverse 2 came out they were saying if xenoverse 2 sold well enough that they would they would start the port process for fighters for the switch but not till well after it came out on the ps4 Mm -hmm. so i bought xeno xenoverse 2 and i bought fighters for the ps4 because i really wanted that on switch so i'm hyped for that killer queen black for me is kind of a a weird one i'm super hyped for it because that game is amazing but you i've like i've only ever seen that at like arcades like legitimate arcades like side arcade and yeah but that game is so much fun. I'd Ground love Control to sit has on one the of those. couch and play that. Oh, you know that. You've been to that. You've played that at Ground Control, actually. Yeah. You don't remember the... No, I, I remember that. Right now? Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, and then Monster Hunter Generation. Good, but I'll take it. We kind of knew that was on the horizon. FIFA 19, we definitely knew on the horizon. Paladins is kind of shocking to me. I mean, we, we heard about it. We've seen like them up, update some Joy-Con information. But I, I didn't really think it would be ready this fast. And that's another one. Like like PUBG, I will play the, the crappier version because it's on the Switch. Yeah. Yeah. 
There's a lot to be said for it being on the Switch. I don't know. I yeah, I I've been reading the Paladin's leaks and rumors and whatnot for so long that it doesn't actually shock me, and that's probably where why my like lack of surprise comes from. So I mean, but, I kind of feel stupid for being surprised, but I still do feel surprised. I am excited for Killer Queen on a console because yeah, I I read online somewhere that there was only there's only like 50 cabinets throughout the U.S. So this is 50. not yeah, it was a very low number. So the idea that it's it's coming to consoles and this is something that everybody can experience like this is actually an online game that I'm into and also the that nerds. game is hmm? legendary. How yeah. is there only 50? Yeah. Oh my god. If you've never played it, you're in for a treat. If you have a bunch of friends who hate each other. <laughs> Never have I seen more salt from Troy, Troy's mouth than after getting dump, dumpstered at Killer Queen. And and the randos too at the at the um, arcade with us because it takes a lot of players to fill out the team. Even the randos were like getting salty. It was great. <laughs> it was the best game ever. For somebody who hates PvP, I make an exception for that. Fair enough. But yeah, I think we're ready to move on. Another new Switch Wired Pro Controller, Wired Pro Controller from Power A. Tell me about this one. It's garbage. What? Fight me. There's no way you actually think that. I... First of all, read it. What is it? Uh, it is a Crash Bandicoot controller, which is its own brand of just what? Why? So you're wrong immediately because it's Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> you don't even like Crash Bandicoot. You aren't even going to buy it. I don't have to. I, it's not for me, but that's not the point. That's like me saying Marvel is terrible. No, dude. Objectively, it is not. Look at how well it does in the in the theaters. Okay, I, I I will concede the point. Uh, it's got a really cool color scheme that it's it's just a bright like bright teal, and I mean again I stand by I don't understand why this is a thing why this is coming out I'm I'm never gonna complain about more options I won't actually like poo poo on this for what it is but I just don't I don't understand it doesn't it doesn't make any sense to me I mean if it was a Disgaea one you'd be all over it right yeah no maybe i don't know i've been real weird about controllers despite the fact that i probably need more um i actually am probably going to get one of these power rays just because they're 30 bucks and i need more pro controllers because people whine about joy cons uh, they're decent and they're very comfortable they're more comfortable almost more comfortable than the pro controller nothing really beats the pro controller yeah the pro controller is pretty great if only it wasn't uh what 80 bucks a million dollars yeah they were actually on sale for 30 bucks at my local grocery store, and I didn't pick one up because I'm dumb, so... I was just going to say, because uh, you lack sense, what the... Anyway, so the Switch Wired Pro Controller from Power A, uh, it has the same metallic D-pad, so if you've seen any of their designs, they do this, like, fake metal D-pad, which I hate Colin likes, but, you know, personal preference there, clearly. Uh, it is... I don't know if we've said this. It is 30 bucks, which again is just it's it's at that price point, it's really if you need more controllers, these are really good to get one of or two of. How many how many of these can you plug in at a time? Uh three, because you have three USB ports in your switch. You have two on the side and then one back behind the um where the where the adapter plugs in, the power adapter plugs in. Wow, I didn't realize you had three ports available. Wow, okay. Yeah, uh, three USB ports, yeah. One of them's supposed to be a 3.0, but it's not been activated yet. That's the hidden one inside the, the dock cabinet. Mm. But yeah, you can have three. Well, I will have to pick one of these up then. Jeez, I didn't know that. Oh, but it's important to note, they're $30 because they're massively stripped down. There's no rumble, there's no NFC, there's no uh, six axis or you know whatever the tilt thing is called. Mm. It's just basic pad. Yeah, and I mean... Yeah. When you've got four people over, it's not a, that's that's what you need. Just, I I need something for people to play Mario Kart with. Yeah, and for that it's great. Yeah, for certain things it's really awful, like like Splatoon, because. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, I get, you could do it with Splatoon, but I like to aim with the tilt. So. Yeah, I think that's that's people will. I was one of these people that complained about like tilt controls and motion controls and whatnot, but it's actually like it's it's how you play the game. Get over it. Just just get over it. I would say if you want tilt controls, though, get. I mean, I know you hate this, but I'd say get one of these. It's because this has tilt. This has. I think this has NFC. It has everything the Pro Controller has. It's just. It's just not form. You know, it's not super comfortable. For the ninety-nine percent of our audience that doesn't watch the YouTube, he's holding up the eight-bit Do SNES controller, which doesn't have the wings like any modern controller does to grip onto with your hands, which is my personal complaint about it. Um, yeah, it's the classic. SNES controller. Absolutely. Exactly. So, 
Uh, and with that aside about controllers and which ones people should pick up, uh, one more note on the Power A. They, they recently showed, a, there was a rumor released that they are talking about releasing GameCube style controllers. Uh, it looked like just a box mock-up. There was no official source. It was uploaded to Imgur, so it's not at all a reliable space. But we're talking about Power A, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slot that in right there. And with that, move us along. I'd be all about that. Oh, all right. you actually, uh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. What? You would be about a GameCube what? controller? GameCube controller? Yeah, I really like those. I thought they were kind of weird, and I liked them. Weird. Okay, that shocks me. Also, I've been watching a lot lately. Aside, aside, and then we'll get back to it. I've been watching a lot lately of people like adapting their GameCube controllers to the Switch, and they've been loving it for stuff. Especially Mario Tennis Aces. I saw an article about that. But oh. how the game plays so much better with a GameCube controller adapted. Yeah. But anyway, that's a different rabbit hole. Let's jump to uh, Blaze Blue has been released, and they have some interesting rules. Yeah. So they are restricting streams, which. That sentence right there got my hackles all kinds of raised because that is absolutely the kind of thing that just sets me on fire. Um, but they made it a little bit better. They're only restricting streams of story mode content and then all music. You can have the music present, but if the only thing that you're showing is the music, if there's no video, then that's when they start to get problems. Yes. Oh, I was just going to say there was there was like, um, I think it was Dissidia NT. You couldn't, you couldn't stream the story of that either. And I thought that was a really weird decision. But you can play, like, they, you can stream PvP, but mm -hmm. you can't stream the story of that either. So, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if this is becoming a thing, but that's twice I've seen it in this year already, so. I don't like the story. I mean, and this, this ties into my, like, whole, the core of my being doesn't like being told what to do with content that I own. Like, you can't tell me you what to like do with my You don't like being told what to do by the authorities. Forget <laughs> your video games exactly and i that that's really what this is about for me i don't like that a company is trying to tell me what kind of content i can upload to youtube or stream on my twitch channel i don't like that at all and i think that's ridiculous to try to police that there's so many more important things for oh god i forget their name the company that makes blaze blue to like to actually worry about on a day-to-day -day basis to to know that there is somebody in their company that is combing through youtube looking for story mode spoilers is just so beyond ridiculous to me it's just such a waste of time and money and effort and and the people that want those spoilers they should be allowed to get their spoilers like that's really arc system works thank you um and yeah the, the people that want spoilers like if i can't play the game if i'm not gonna sit through in places of story mode for whatever reason then then give me the story like don't don't be obnoxious about it uh, you know who really loves these who jasmine really loves these blaze blue games i mean i like yeah. the games i i really like 2d fighters and they're like their animu is all get out and i love the art style that they put into these like i'm i'm all about it if i remember correctly blaze blue is actually the company that said they were going to be releasing a super stripped down version with no what were they doing they did something weird with the monetization with uh like dlc characters and whatnot I can't think of what it was now, and I've I've just completely wasted a bunch of show time. So, moving on. I still think that it is dumb to restrict this sort of thing, and I don't think that companies should do this at all. I don't think that they should be telling you how to, what to do with your video content. But, at least it is not, you know, restricting you from monetizing your own videos unless you go through their dumb creator program or some kind of stupid program like that, which I don't know any company that is dumb enough to do Shots that. fired. <laughs> Let's definitely shoot shoot uh take shots at the com one of the companies that we upload to anyway let's move on captain toad treasure tracker pre-order bonus revealed what is it oh my god oh Thanks. my god <laughs> it's my kryptonite i couldn't help it they're releasing pins they're pins and i love pins it's a little toad pin and a little toadette pin and i want them so bad i have i have zero care for this game i don't i'm not at all into it but but i'm gonna pre-order for those pins i have a problem help me <laughs> I, I refuse. <laughs> you need rehab. Pin rehab. Yes. Moving on, that's all I got. I just... I. You might, oh, you yeah. might want to say this part too. Yeah, yeah, also it's available on the 13th of July. Which Okay, now we can move on. I'll save you from yourself. Thank you. The eShop got a new section for featured games. And this news came out 20 minutes before we started recording, so I didn't get a chance to go look at it. But apparently there's a new section in the shop for... Nintendo highlighted games, which, I mean, 
the big idea in Nintendo journalism right now is that curation is an issue. There's there's millions of things being uploaded to the eShop and, and they it's it's actually impossible to sort through everything anymore. And so they're they're working on that curation problem and that's that's great. It's a little concerning in that they're doing the thing that every company does and that they're gonna funnel people to the big names, but if it's yeah, not some... really giving the indie guys a fair crack. Exactly, yeah. yeah. There, there could be stuff that's hidden that nobody's going to know about. Um, but if it keeps people from buying that $20 ski, wear, or ski ball shovelware crap that's in the eShop, like, that's a good thing. And so I can't actually be mad. Because, you know, the first time some random parent that doesn't know what they're doing buys a crappy game for their kid for 30 bucks and they hate it, they're not going to buy stuff anymore. So I... I like that there's some kind of delineation between the garbage and the non-garbage. And as Colin has pointed out, there are things that are... How do I say this delicately? Not safe for work? <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's not safe for work stuff on the eShop. And to give people another place to look to avoid seeing that sort of thing is a good thing. Though that 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 That's welcome to be there, I th in my opinion. But it definitely needs to be, you need to go looking for it. And you need to have to yes. work hard to go look for it. It absolutely deserves to be there. It just needs to not be on the front page <laughs> like it was yesterday when I logged in. Was it Pokemon yesterday, really? It was uh, when I went to get Pokemon Quest two, three, four days ago. How long have I been alive? It was, uh, it was like in the first section, there's like nine or whatever. It was like in the, the last slot. And then Pokemon Quest was like right underneath it. I'm actually yeah. shocked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you sent me that that picture, and I was like, "Yo, I've already seen this." Because I had to download Pokemon Quest, and it was right before it. Uh, yeah. I'm so <laughs> the family friendly company doesn't know how to do family friendly, but okay. I mean, when you've never had to filter before, it's there's a tra transition. I uh, yeah, I guess apparently. Speaking but, of transitions. Yeah, it's time for a transition. This is the question of the time period. That's my segment. I should be talking here. <laughs> I thought we were going to go straight into the segment, so I was very confused. Well, you didn't play the right segment sound to go into the segment, well, so... That's because I couldn't find it. Anyway, the question of the time period is, what are you the most hyped about for E3? Our current available options... And by current, I mean the only available options because I don't know when, when Strawpole took this away. Anyway, current available options. Poke... Oh... Oh, this is this is poorly timed. Pokemon is the first one, which, whoops, Fire Emblem, Super Smash Brothers, Metroid Prime Four, or other. And as we're about to talk about, I don't think there's going to be any real news about Pokemon this E3. You don't know that. You don't know that for sure. I mean, you're right. I don't. But it, what it are does... you, 4chan? Yeah. Who is this 4chan? It doesn't look good. Because we do know that there's going to be an E3 before Pokemon releases. They said latter half, so... I don't know. In any case, if you want to vote on this poll, you can have your voice heard at bit.ly slash dsn poll 34, or you can... or and even. You can join us in the Discord and talk about it there, where we have a channel devoted to the poll. And again... Not one or the other. Yeah, yeah, you can't do both. Uh, as an aside, the Discord has been wild popping lately, so come join us. We were, we were on Pokemon Watch... Or Pokemon Hype Watch. Actually, I did that alone. We were on Fallout Hype Watch for a while. Me, you, and Riru. No, so. you didn't do that alone. You had you had your one buddy in there on Fallout. I was with you too. I just wasn't, you know. Yeah, no, no, no. Wanna... We were we were all there for Fallout. It was Pokemon that I was all alone for. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Just yeah. he's in Norway and he was asleep, and you were also the one asleep. Thing I care about, yeah. Yeah, you <laughs> were asleep there for. for. <laughs> and any case, Fallout seventy six. I don't even know what it is. I was there for that. The Discord's been a lot of fun. Come join us. Anyway. That, what? I hate you. I, I don't have we it. Spent, I, I couldn't find we it. We spent 30 minutes looking for this before the show started. Uh, just, the, just pretend there's some Pikachu sounds right now. Okay. Pokemans. They announced three games. Devin, what three games did we get, we get announced? Pokemon announced Quest, which is available now. Let's go Pikachu slash Eevee, which I don't have a release date for. Is there a known release date? November 16th. There we go. I'm glad you know that off the top of your head and you were such a nerd. Uh, and then finally, we have the Gen 8 mainline Pokemon game. 
uh, core game is what they're calling it, which will be released in the latter half of 2019. Yeah. How do you want to do this? You want to just talk about Pokemon Quest? Because that's the one we have available? Uh, if, yeah. If, I mean, I could talk about all three. Well, I can't really talk about Pokemon Switch Gen 8 because we don't really know much. Yeah, but I we, couldn't... Let's, let's start with Quest, yeah. Okay. It's released now. Free-to-play mobile title, but it's on the Switch. The, it's coming to phones at the end of the month. They said end of this month or June, so we should have it by the end of this month. It does not have all the normal free-to-play garbage. It's what do they call it? Nintendo calls it free to start. That's what it is. The, uh, there are microtransactions, but they're more of a DLC style in that you can only buy them once and then you're done. All of them, you can only buy them once and then you're done. Which is, it's a microtransaction, but not in the same sense a normal one is. Fight me, Devin. I will fight you to the death. We may have argued about this for like 10 minutes before the show started. So Yeah, yeah. we may be late for, for many reasons, and that is one of them. It does have an auto mode, which... At some point, you're going to be very grateful for, but you can't take on any of the bosses. Well, I mean, until you are way over leveled, you cannot fight the bosses in auto mode later in the game because it just requires you to micromanage your, your dudes more appropriately than, than the auto does. Okay, so that right there, I'm going to stop you right there because this is one of my big criticisms. This has always been one of my biggest criticisms of mobile games. And I don't know if you remember this, but way, way back in the day, you asked me, are there any good phone games that are actually worth playing, or is it all just Angry Birds garbage? And I said, yes. Mobile games are actually not terrible. You actually you just have to find them. So I am the first proponent of mobile games here. Yeah, no, I know. But I found it. It's right there, Devin. Look when a that. game... Um, when you make the statement that auto mode is good for the game, that's just bad game design. It's just bad game design. If there's... I mean, it's, it's a mobile game. I don't... Mobile games don't sit on the same pedestal that console games sit on or even or even like ds games sit on mobile games are and i don't know why but mobile games are just all of them are, are garbage every every mobile game that i've ever enjoyed has an auto and it's made the game better i'm talking fire emblem heroes final fantasy Dissidia, this pokemon quest game I've, I've played so many of these things and they've all had mobile games there was a tactics game we played for a little while too that also had a mobile game i can't remember what it's called something of war yeah, I, I know the game you're talking about, and it was also worse for it, because what an auto button means is that there's just a lot of needless grinding, which... It, that is true. That is true. That's, that's what that means at its core, and, and why but not... You don't just... have to do it as long as you push the auto button and then walk away for five minutes. But do you not... Do, I, I can't tell if you're trolling me or if you really don't understand, and it drives you crazy. No. I understand, but I also, it's, it's a mobile game. That's just the nature of the beast. So it doesn't bother me because I know what I'm getting into when I download a mobile game. But it can be better than that. And it, I've seen them better than that. It, I've never seen it better. I don't know what you're seeing. It should be better. I don't know that it can be better, but it should be. I'll agree with you on that. So, but as, as far as mobile game fare goes, this is better than most. And maybe I'll be okay with it when it becomes a mobile game, but right now it's a Switch game, and so therefore it's competing with Mario Tennis and Shantae and, you know, the MMO. I'm going to be really honest. I hate it on the Switch because I can't just pull it out of my pocket and play, you know, when the charges build up, I can't just pull it out of my pocket and play that and put my phone back in. Yes, that is the other feature that we forgot to mention. There are energy timers. You can only play the game for so long before you have to set it down and let it rest so, and that so the way that that kind of works is you get a certain amount of the in-game currency every 22 hours and you can use that to reset your battery and you get like 90 and it takes 25 so you get a decent amount of resets in a day but it's just it's one of those things that i don't understand why yeah. it's there in, in that's the one thing the final fantasy to city game i was talking about doesn't have timers at all you play until you get bored of it or you play until you run out of time to play it I really like that, and I don't understand why this game has timers. It doesn't feel like it makes sense, especially because they give you so many ways to get around the timer. I'll agree with you wholeheartedly on that, but this is just that's just standard, standard mobile fare. And again, maybe when it's a mobile game, I won't hate it so much, but right now it's a Switch game, and it's competing with PUBG, with Shantae, with Mario Tennis, with Mario Kart. like and Anything that's not a mobile game, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly, and that's, yeah. that's where the issue lies. I can choose to play a real game or I can choose to play Pokemon Mo Pokemon Quest. I also didn't download it day one because I, I looked at it, I saw it, I was like, decided that was a mobile game and I thought, eh, I'll pick it up later and I'll just get like a head start and then when it comes out on mobile, then I'll, then I'll actually play it. And I've just been enjoying it so much. Again, it's, it's more about, it's less about the gameplay and it's more about the management of it. 
Like you don't, it's like the football manager game. You don't play the game. The game auto plays itself, but you manage all the stuff afterwards. And that's, that's where the fun and the enjoyment comes for me in this game. Okay, you found the secret words that make this make sense to me, actually, because as someone who loves management games, that's actually like, yeah, no, you figured it out. Good job. But I mean, y you also have the ability to play the game. I just prefer not to, personally. Yeah. yeah. I, think it, I don't think it's trying to be anything. I don't think it's trying to do anything. I think Nintendo was just like, hey, check out this, this thing we gave you to you know, placate the masses for now mm -hmm. while you chew on your fingernails waiting for Gen 8 to come out next year. They didn't want to give us nothing. And I, I'm, again, management sim, all about it. Also ready to move on if you are. Yeah, yeah, I got nothing to say. I've, I've put in my whining. So the next game, okay. have, huh? do you want to intro? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll do this too. Let's go Pikachu. Let's go Eevee. They're Pokemon Yellow reboots, but they're reboots towards a, casual, a more casual audience. They're not meant for the kind of people who like Crystal and Platinum and, and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. They're for the, the people who play pokemon go yeah fight me they're for the people who played pokemon go really liked pokemon go maybe you have kids by now and kind of want to play and interact with their kid in that in that realm in those realms you can like w one of the uh, interviews I, I saw said i go out catch a pokemon and then i can give it to my son or daughter in in let's go and that you know builds a bond between us because i'm hey look what i found for you now you get to go play with it the game uh doesn't you don't level up in the traditional sense like you don't battle for experience so much you uh but you can catch for experience and it, ha it has online play it has online trading it has normal stuff it's just not going to be as like serious as a as a as a gen 8 or a gen 6 or 7 whatever as a core game would be yeah 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 it's definitely more meant to be like it, it's trying to tack on to the pokemon go craze because what was the number for that 800 million players or something insane something so they're trying to yeah. They're trying to tap into that one more time. Yeah. And I'm going to be really honest. I've pre-ordered both of these. You pre-ordered both of them? And I'll tell you why. I don't like Pikachu. I'm tired of Pikachu. Pikachu sucks. Eevee. I'm all about Eevee. But you cannot evolve the Pikachu or the Eevee. And when I found that out, I was mad disappointed because Jolteon is the only real reason to have an Eevee. So I pre-ordered the Pikachu one after I learned that you can't evolve the Eevee. And I just haven't canceled the Eevee one yet because I'm not sure if I'm going to or not. <laughs> you may just yeah. buy both because you have a problem i probably won't because they're still they're 60 dollar games they're still full price games and that's i'm not gonna drop 120 dollars on a on a p on a pokemon light mm -hmm. so but it looks cool you can you can ride all your pokemon your the, the starter you get is always on your shoulder on your back on your whatever but if you get like a charizard you can just ride the charizard have the charizard up behind you if you get a Nido King, same thing. You just run around with whatever. So it, it lets you it lets you experience like the the Pokemon was it crystal and the Pokemon yellow experience of having things follow you, like other Pokemon follow you. So so here's my confusion and my question. We've got that it's it's got Pokemon Go links, we've got that it's not gonna have traditional experience, it's instead gonna have CP, et cetera, et cetera. All of that, like all of those systems that are simplified. But at its core, is it still going to be Pokemon? You start in Pallet Town, you have your Eevee or your Pikachu, you go to the next town, you capture stuff on the way, you fight the gym, you go to the next town. Yeah. So it's, yeah. that, it's that whole loop. It's the whole, it's the same thing, it's just, it's just simplified and dumbed down a bit, yeah. yeah. You, uh, you don't encounter Pokemon randomly in the grass, you see them, which is, which is a la Pokemon Go. You throw Pokeballs to catch them, like with the Joy-Con motion, a la Pokemon Go. You um you can you can even have two people sit down and like two v one enemy enemy trainers like it's totally meant to just be like a sit down and relax and enjoy kind of experience not like a, a traditional gen. I mean, if you don't have to like grind for six hours because you pick Charmander, then you're not even really playing a real Pokemon game. <laughs> I mean, you haven't had to do that for a while since X and Y. I think maybe even Black and White too, because now the experience share is just open broken op i really hope gen 8 isn't quite that way i i i don't know i hated it but i also liked it when i had to grind all my pokemon up individually or like you know two at a time with a experience share you hated it in concept and then you had to actually grind and you were like okay never mind i'm, I'm lazy i don't want to do this yeah but i mean when i was playing x and y i like i i functionally used two pokemon the entire game and everybody was just level relevant so 
what if they put an auto battler into Pokemon Gen 8? I will have a problem with that because that's not a mobile game. Oh, okay. That's what the line is drawn. Anyway. I mean, let's not get into that. I don't know. I don't, I don't expect that from my, from my Gen 8. My, my mainline games. Yeah, but anyway. Yeah, so anyway, the last thing up, Pokemon Switch Gen 8. Wait, Don't wait, no, no, no. You missed, you missed some important oh. stuff. There's an oh, add-in sh- device that you can get to transfer your Pokemon between Let's Go and Go. And that's yes. going to be like a $50, I think it said, add-on. Like little... So you can get... Right now, there are two. One is officially licensed. One's kind of like a Chinese knockoff, but they both do the same thing called the Pokemon Go Plus. They both really, really, really suck really suck niantic breaks it every single day they do something stupid and break the friggin' thing uh, the longest i've ever had my go plus work was like a solid month and that was like the golden golden month of my life every update they break it and it by break it i mean like it'll catch a pokemon or spin a stop and then disconnect and you have to open up the game and reconnect it and and sometimes it, it'll disconnect before you can even throw it's the dumbest thing ever they're gonna add one that does the same functional thing for Pokemon Go, but it's it's more useful because it's it's the shape of a Pokeball. It's got a little joystick for the eye of the Pokeball and a little button at the top. You can use it as a Joy-Con for Let's Go. And you can also use it as a Pokemon Go Plus for Pokemon Go, and you can store Pokemon in in it from the Let's Go game and bring them over and just you know have them in the. If you shake it, you, they make a sound or whatever. Some some gimmick. But yeah. I hate that accessory so much. And if you're going to add this stupid thing, you better fix it. I don't know what... It's just Bluetooth. Like, I don't understand why it's so difficult. I've never had any Bluetooth thing work so poorly in my life. And honestly, actually, that right there, that whole statement, is is kind of what blows my mind about all of this. Nintendo is a pretty, like, high-quality bar company. And Niantic is just... Don't Niantic get me wrong. is so not. No, Niantic is so the opposite. Yeah, I like Niantic a lot. I'm not. I'm not crapping on them here, but they don't. They don't. They don't have a QA department. They just don't. It's very obvious. And the QA department is the angry nerds that write letters to them after they break stuff. Exactly. So it, it's just a very odd pairing to me, and I'm I'm surprised that uh, Nintendo is continuing to allow them to have their hands on one of the biggest franchises, given you know. Pokemon Go Fest and the constant breaking of Pogo and et cetera, et cetera. So. Also, quick disclaimer. The Pokemon Go Plus clip uh, historically has worked best for iOS. That's what I'm playing on. I'm playing on iOS and I'm already experiencing this terrible, like I'm having this terrible experience. If you're on Android, I, my thoughts and prayers with your soul because it's, it's supposed to be way worse for you and I'm sorry. So yeah, that's Let's Go. Tell us everything we know about Gen 8. Let's, let's break this into two hours because there's so much okay. news here. Now let's go into Gen 8. Uh, so there's going to be a Gen 8. Are we done? Are we done? Should I hit the transition sound? <laughs> uh, no, it's delayed to the second half of 2019. It should be in the style of the things like X and Y and Sun and Moon from the quote. I hope it's less like Sun and Moon, more like X and Y, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. So yeah, that's all we know so far. Which is why I think there will be E3 news. I forgot one thing well, about let's yeah. go. Oh yeah, also you forgot a thing. I, I I told you to remind me and I forgot it. Um so it will be online, but you will not be required to have Nintendo Switch online to play it online. Epic casual game. I love that. I love that so much. Is I'm that because it has Pogo connectivity? I have no idea. I have to imagine that's the reason you don't need Nintendo Switch on because it'll have Pogo connectivity and without that it, you take off a huge portion of the game or take out a huge portion of the game. Mm. So that, that makes sense to me. That's really cool. I think that's a really big deal. Yeah. Even, it's, though, even though it's like a, what, a $4 per month or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's basically free. Cool. I'm just surprised that they're doing that. I really didn't expect them to divide their games up into requires and doesn't require Switch Online. I have to wonder if this is the exception, like like the one exception, will be the one exception because of the Pogo connectivity. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm we'll expecting. So, tell. okay. But with that aside, back to Gen Eight. Uh, actually, no, we've already covered Gen Eight. We don't know anything yeah. about it, basically. I said the whole bit. Yeah, that's <laughs> all we got. I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> I, I do have one more bit. Speaking of Gen Eight, when uh, when you first connect your Pokemon from Let's Go to your Pogo, or I think it's when you send one from Pogo to Let's Go, you'll get a special gift in Pogo, and it's supposed to be. The first ever Gen 8 Pokemon that will get revealed. 
Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Released released in Pogo first. Yeah. That's speculation. I don't know if that's been confirmed, confirmed, but that's that's what I think they said. Yeah, there's a big like giant transcript of the whole news thing that I haven't dug through yet because that's a lot of information. But yeah, <laughs> I will go through that at some point. But yeah, that about wraps us up for Pokemons. Unless you got something else. I think so. I'm sure I missed. I'm sure I missed some stuff. Come, come, yell at me in the Discord, and, and I'll and I'll fix it. I'll yeah. correct it. There we go. That's that's the the good call to action right there. I approve. Is it just it just put. Hey, listen. There we go. And with that, that about wraps us up for the show. If you want to email us, have your voice heard, you can do so at desyncnerds at gmail dot com. You can also tweet at us. The show is at desyncnerds. D e s y n. C E D N E R D S, or at either of us individually. I'm at K U L N A H, and he is at D S N Colin. If you want to support the show, we are on Patreon at patreon.com slash desync nerds. If you want to support us but cannot do so monetarily, you can rate and review us on iTunes and Stitcher, and we will read those in the section two segments up there. Uh, if you want to catch us live, we record Mondays at 6 30 PST, unless Devin spends the whole weekend doing something and doesn't write show notes until uh, what was that like 4 p.m. on Monday night? Uh, we are also live at 9.30 EST or 2.30 AM on Tuesday in the UK. Uh, all of that can be found at twitch.tv slash desyncnerds. All of our VODs will be up on YouTube. Our channel is desyncnerds. And finally, we have a Discord, which again has been popping. Join us there at bit.ly slash DSN Discord. Thanks for listening, everybody. Go Caps. Go Caps.